Uh, okay, the last thing we want to talk about in this uh, chapter uh, is zero knowledge proofs. Now, I saw an article on zero knowledge proofs a while back, uh, and they had a typo in that article. They left out one of the zero, uh, one of the O's in proofs. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, so zero knowledge proofs. Uh, this is kind of an interesting concept. So. Uh, Alice has a secret, okay, and Alice wants to prove to Bob as a way of authenticating. She wants to prove to Bob that she knows this secret, but in the process, she doesn't want to give away the secret or any information about the secret to Bob or Trudy or anybody else. So the secret's still a secret, but yet Bob can be confident that Alice actually knows the secret. Although Bob doesn't know the secret, doesn't know the secret. Okay, so it's one of those things. It's sort of like the perfect forward secrecy. You say, you scratch your head and say, that's you know, how can you do that? But there's some crypto, you know, kind of sleight of hand here that makes it all sort of work out. Uh, the process ends up being probabilistic. We can never say with 100% certainty that this is Alice. Okay, but you can get the probability of an error. You can make that as small as you want by just iterating the protocol more times. Okay, so you can drive that probability down to something negligible. Uh, they call it an interactive proof system. You'll see why here in a second. We just need to iterate something several times. Okay, the motivation for this. Uh, suppose you've got this cave, right, and it's got this door, right, that you have to say a secret phrase to open the door. And what's the secret phrase that opens the door? Open sesame. open sesame, but you know, if you watch the cartoons, according to Bugs Bunny, it's open sarsaparilla. Okay, so that's what we're gonna use, open sarsaparilla. Okay, so it's, here's the secret door right here. You have to know this, I mean the door, you have to know the secret phrase to open it. So the question is, uh, Alice claims that she knows this secret phrase to open the door. Can she prove to Bob that she knows the secret phrase without <coughs> revealing the secret phrase to Bob? That's the goal. Well, okay, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, Bob's going to tell uh, Alice to go down to this point. He's going to wait up there where he, he can't see you know, what she's going to do. And he's going to holler into the cave and say, okay, go. Okay, at that point, Alice flips a coin and decides which way to go. She can go either to the side there marked R or the side marked S. And so she flips the coin, she decides to go to the side marked R. Okay, we got to see that again. That's really special. Okay, so <laughs> you go to the side marked R. Okay, again, Bob didn't see that. Okay, so now Bob, he comes down to the point marked Q, and he flips a coin. And the coin he flips tells him whether to call the side R or the side S. And whichever side he calls out, Alice has to come out that particular side. Okay, so let's suppose, just for the sake of argument, he happens to flip the coin and it says S. Okay, so he says, okay, Alice, come out from side S. So what does Alice have to do? She has to say the secret phrase really quietly so Bob doesn't hear. Okay, and then come through that side. Okay. Uh, I know you're all waiting to see the door open here, so keep watch closely. Oh, there it goes. Okay. <laughs> So the door opens and Alice comes out the correct side. Okay, now the fact that Alice showed up on the side that Bob called out, does that prove to Bob that she knows the secret phrase? Not really. No, because it could be the case that she actually chose to go down this particular side, right? And Bob told her to come out that side. Okay, so what's the probability that she actually had to use the secret phrase? It's 50-50, it's one half, okay? So that's not very good odds, right? I mean, only a 50-50 chance that it could be somebody who doesn't know the phrase versus somebody who does. But what happens if you repeat it again? What happens, just repeat the process again? What's the chance that, that Alice, if she didn't know the phrase, could come out the correct side both times? She'd have to fool you, that, I mean, she'd have to get lucky the first time, right? That's one half. And she'd have to get lucky the second time. That's another one half. So it's a one-fourth chance that she could do it two times in a row. How about three times in a row? How about four? How about five? Okay, so the way you would do this is, you, if you're Bob, you would repeat this a bunch of times, and only if Alice came out the correct side every time would you accept it as being Alice, and if she ever failed to come out once, you'd say, okay, that's it. You don't know the secret phrase. 
Okay, and so by doing that, you can make the probability of an error as small as you want. If you do it n times, the probability should equal you every time is 1 over 2 to the n. You want a probability of 1 in a million of making an error? Repeat it 20 times. 1 in a billion? Repeat it 30 times. Okay, so you can drive that error down. You'll never know for sure, but you can make that error, chance of an error, really small. Okay, got it? Okay, it's easy. We're done, right? Okay. Uh, okay, so the problem here is the cave. You know, unless you're in Afghanistan or someplace like that, you really can't use caves too much. So can we do this without a cave? Um, and what we're going to rely on here, it, it looks very much like a, a public key sort of system. It's, it's kind of similar to what you'd see with RSA. We're going to take two large primes, multiply them together to get a modulus n. Okay, and then we're going to rely on the fact that finding square roots modulo n, okay, is a hard problem. In fact, finding square roots modulo n, as some people who did the uh, uh, cryptanalysis project found out, is exactly equivalent to factoring, okay? It's equivalent. It's the same problem. Okay, so if factoring's hard, finding square roots modulo n is hard. So we're going to base our problem on that. Okay, so here we go. Choose P and Q, two primes, large primes, uh, and form the modulus. Uh, S is Alice's secret. Okay, so who knows the secret? Alice, nobody else. Okay, the goal is to convince Bob. Alice wants to convince Bob she knows this secret. That's going to authenticate her because she's the only one who knows it. And not reveal any information about it. Okay, so we're going to have another piece of public information. We're going to take the, mod, uh, the secret, square it, mod n. Okay, and we'll call that the V. So those are the two public parameters. The secret here is S. Okay, that's the only thing that's not shown. Okay, so again, the goal is for Alice to convince Bob she knows S without revealing anything about S. Easy, right? Okay, so here we go. Uh, okay, so the protocol is something like this, or, or goes like this. So Alice, first of all, she chooses a random value R. She squares that mod n and sends that to Bob. We'll call that x, okay, whatever, whatever that value is. Bob then flips a coin, okay, chooses either 0 or 1, and sends that back to Alice. Okay, Alice then responds with r, the same r she chose up here, right, r times s to the e, where e is either 0 or 1, mod n. Okay, so now Bob has those two values, x and y. What he does to see whether this iteration of the protocol passes or not, he verifies that this equation holds true. Somewhere here. Yeah, he verifies that this equation holds true, that y squared is equal to x times v to the e mod n. Okay, why should, why should that be true? Well, look at what we sent here. Okay, what's y squared? Okay, y squared is r squared times s to the 2e. Right? Okay, what's x times v to the e? <coughs> x is r squared times v to the e. That's s squared times e. That's s to the 2e, sorry. Right? Because b is s squared, s to the 2e. It's the same. Okay? So if everybody follows the rules of the protocol, this equation will hold true. Okay, that's all it's saying. Okay? If that equation holds true, Bob says, okay, this iteration of the protocol passed. What does this have to do with the cave? <laughs> okay, think about it. Uh, Alice chooses a random value here. That's sort of like Alice walking into the cave and flipping the coin to decide which way to go. Okay? Now Bob flips the coin uh, to decide whether E is 0 or 1. That's sort of like Bob telling Alice to come out side R or side S. So he makes a random choice there. Okay. Now, okay, so let's look at the, there's two cases here when E is equal 0 or E is equal to 1. Let's look at those separately. It's kind of interesting what happens here. Okay, let's suppose E is equal to 1, first of all. Uh, what gets sent in the first message? Same. It's always the same, R squared. Okay, Alice chooses a random value, sends R squared mod n. And Bob sends what in the second message? E equal 1 in this case, okay. And what does Alice respond with in the final message? What is y? Y is r times 
S to the E. Okay, E is one, so that's R times S. Okay, so she responds with R times S mod N in this particular case. And Bob still has to verify the equation, you know, Y squared equals X times E to the E. Well, okay, so what happens in this case? When Bob chooses E equal one, Alice has to know R, of course, but she also has to know S, the secret S. So this is like she went down this side of the cave and Bob told her to come out the other side. She had to know the secret in order to get out that side. But what happens if Bob chooses E equals zero? Well, the first message is the same. Alice just chooses this random value and squares it, sends it. Bob sends E equals zero. What does Alice send in the third message? R times S to the E. What's S to the E? One. Okay, so she just sends R in the third message. In particular, she doesn't have to know S, okay? You don't have to know S. So it's like she went down this side of the cave and Bob told her to come out this side. You don't have to know the secret in that case. Well, this is foolish, right? I mean, if you're Bob, why would you ever choose zero? Why don't you just choose one and be done with it, right? Seems easy. Hold that thought. <laughs>